What's up, Pokemon trainers? I have a special video for you today. Joining me is my husband, Mason. Hello. Who is a competitive Pokemon champion. Now that's title. Oh, you could say that. Today he's going to share his latest strategy that is gaining him wins sometimes in two rounds. I call it my delete button maneuver. It's pretty wild. Well, thanks for joining us. As a bit of background, Mason, how long have you been playing Pokemon? Since 1999. Wow. I know I'm old. <laughs> and of that time, how long have you been playing competitively? Since like 2015? 14? For about 10 years. About that, yeah. Okay. And if you could, who would you say are the top two well-rounded Pokemon for battling? With how many there are now, there's like over a thousand Pokemon. That's really a really hard choice to make. Um, God, I really don't know. You know what? I'm just going to go with Ditto because he can be anybody. That's what I used to say my favorite Pokemon was, but I couldn't decide. I like way back used... in, J in Gen 1, I was like, yeah, it's Ditto. I have used Ditto competitively a few times, and it's actually worked out pretty well. But... Mm. He's just my seed for Pokemon babies, so. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ditto. <laughs> He's everybody's. I respect you, I swear. <laughs> just the universal sperm bank for Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a battle of what you're capable of. Now, before we begin, I'd just like to mention I do not competitively play. My playstyle is the same as it was when I was playing Red as an 8-year-old. I enjoyed the story, and I caught them all. I do have a mediocre understanding of double team battling and how to build a team, but nothing like you're about to see. So let's jump in and see what happens. Alright guys, so we're getting connected here, and we'll introduce my team, which is just going to be of guys that I like. There is a small strategy behind it, mostly between my Politoed and my Lady Colo, um, but not much beyond that. I just really like these people. They're really fun to play with. Honestly, that's fair. I think that's the best way to play Pokemon is just use people you like and enjoy it. My team's a bit more uh, thought out, I guess you could say. A bit more? Yeah, well, I've got Armor Rouge and Ndidi as the base set, and then I'm using Iron Bundle to U-turn into the Armor Rouge, who's going to Terra type into a Grass type, so that becomes a super effective hit. He's also holding a weakness policy, so it'll boost his attack by two stages, and when he gets hit, his ability will also allow him to boost his speed by two stages. Didn't you fail math? I did. Yeah. Ironic, I know. Yeah. yeah. Let's start a petition. Put Pokemon battling into math class. I mean, the entire thing is based on math, so it's ironic that I'm good at it, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't do a lot of stat calculations like a lot of other people do, but I know borderline enough to figure out what's going to happen. So here you can see with the booster energy that the iron bundle just got a speed boost, which is important here because I need him to U-turn into my guy and not get hit first. Yeah, big time important. That's the reason I switched from using a jump bluff previously, because he was a little bit too slow despite being very, very quick as well. His speed was around 178, and I think the iron bundles is over 220, so that's kind of a big deal for this. With a speed like that, that ensures I'm probably not going to get hit first, which is a big problem for this team if it gets hit before I get to do this move. It really kind of throws a big wrench in my plans. So here you see the Terra going into the grass type, that pretty little flower on his head. And shortly, there you go, we've got the Iron Bundle hitting the U-turn onto Arm Rouge. That is going to set off his ability to boost his speed. And it's also going to use his Focus Sash in order to boost his attack and special attack. The special attack is the only one we really care about here because his moves are mostly going to be specials. Then Iron Bundle's going to switch out, and then I'm going to bring the Ndidi in. And that is going to set up the Psychic Terrain, which if your viewers are familiar with the more competitive side of battling will know that stops priority moves, and it's also going to allow me to use the Expanding Force move, which is a Psychic type attack that's going to get boosted by the Psychic Terrain, and it's also going to hit both opponents on your side of the field, which for you means a bad day. Great. The gears to go the expanding force, and then you can see knocks out both guys there pretty quickly. Um, the counters to this team in particular would be dark types. I have a really hard time battling against them, which is why on the back end of my team I've got both Mouse Hold and Annihilate as kind of backup, and then I've also got Garganacle, which is incredibly defensively strong and is also just really hard to kill. So with Soul Cure and Leftovers and Recover and Iron Defense, um, He's borderline immune to dying, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's a good backup in case this original strategy doesn't work out. 
How were you feeling at this point in the battle? I was pretty sad. <laughs> I guess that's I didn't even stand a chance. I didn't even get to do anything. Yeah, that's kind of the strategy on my end, is that if I'm able to knock out two of my opponent's Pokemon, especially the first two that they send out, that's usually the two that they're focused on getting set up and trying to get a win with, um, it's going to be a bad day from there. So here, I was kind of surprised that the Iron Hands went down, but the Sylveon did have no I special too. defense. Just a note. Yeah, I was surprised my Iron Hands went down too. Yeah, I mean, the Sylveon has <laughs> enough special defense in order to survive, which is good, and it looks like you used Yawn on the Ndidi, which if you would have survived another turn, could have put him to sleep. Um, and actually, the Iron Hands is a fighting type, so it shouldn't be surprising he went down to a psychic attack. It is super effective, but here I used Wide Guard in order to block your Hyper Voice, because I know that's the main thing that Sylveon uses. Um, in combination with the Throat Spray, usually boosts a special attack, but in this case, gave me a chance to use the ND and use Psychic and knock him out, so. And you made Sylveon sad. I know, and it's a shiny Sylveon too, which you're very lucky to have, I will say. I worked hard for it. You just murdered him. <laughs> like, he was nothing. Well, at least Pokemon only faint and they don't, in fact, die. So, that's a good bonus. They're just having a little nap and they'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that, I guess. Um, so how did you come up with this team? Uh, the Ndidi Armourouge kind of core team was something that was being used by a lot of people, I want to say in rule set B or C, I don't recall which, but it was immediately seemed to be pretty strong and it was something I caught on to pretty quickly. Um, I just liked Armourouge as a new Pokemon, so I wanted to try it out. I was never a big fan of Ndidi, but clearly they worked well together, they had like kind of a good team synergy. And like I said before, I was using Jump Bluff in order to set up that team before with basically the exact same move U-Turn, which is a bug-type attack going into the Grass Armor Rouge that uses the uh, weakness policy because it's super effective. But Jump Bluff was just a little bit too slow. Sometimes I would have to try and set up tail Tailwind sorry, on turn 1 in order to boost his speed, but by that point there was a very high chance of him getting knocked out. Grass types are super weak against fire and ice and all kinds of stuff flying. So yeah, uh, as, despite the fact that he was really good in certain ways and I had Strength Sap and some other moves like Rage Powder on him to redirect attacks. Uh, he just couldn't take hits good enough in order for me to really pivot around him and have him as a reliable team partner. So while he did work in some previous rule sets, as soon as some of the more powerful Pokemon got added into the game, it caused me a lot of problems and that led me to finding Iron Bundle also had access to U-Turn and then that coupled with how quickly he can move, his, uh, his base speed is like over 200 and including the booster energy at the beginning of the game, I think it goes up to like 240, 250 or something like that. Um, yeah, almost nobody outspeeds that in the game other than maybe like Regilecki, which if I do run into that, that's another thing that could really screw my team over, but so far I haven't had too bad of luck with that, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and what is your strategy for building these teams? Honestly, just finding, I want to say usually two Pokemon or three Pokemon that work really well together, something that works well. So, for instance, the Ludicolo and Politoed that you're using here, um, that's a team that when I first started competitively battling, I used a lot as a rain team because it makes Ludicolo super fast. Politoed's pretty good at taking hits. He uses Ice Beam and a few other moves that can knock out any grass types that are going to threaten both him and Ludicolo. And then Ludicolo being so fast has the option to knock out a lot of other things that might be a bigger problem. And he's also got access to some cool moves like what is it, Teeter Dance, I think, that confuses everybody, he's got Encore, stuff like that, so, yeah, finding two Pokemon that work really well together and complement each other, and then kind of building off of that to find things that cover their weaknesses is usually my main strategy. He also used Pokemon Showdown quite a bit. Yeah, Pokemon Showdown's a great uh, way to test teams and to check on the access that Pokemon have to certain moves, and you don't have to waste a bunch of time in-game catching them and training them and, you know, boosting all their stats and stuff, you can really play around with that on Pokemon Showdown. That's something I know a lot of people take advantage of, and I would recommend it if you don't. Alright, and what would you recommend for less experienced players to get into competitive battling? Honestly, just be patient, and there's a lot of awesome resources on YouTube especially right now that you could look up. Uh, there's also other websites, and a Game 8 is one that I check out once in a while. They have kind of like setup guides for certain Pokemon, so if there's one that you're very interested in using, it'll give you breakdowns of movesets and different stat abilities, um, items, things like that that you can use to start battling with them. And other than that, just find guys that you like, try to make them work, have fun, and be patient. Experiment. You gotta experiment a lot. Definitely. And catch them all. 
Well, until I'd like to get annihilated in another Pokemon battle, I'll be seeing you around. Sounds good. I think uh, I think my Blood Moon or Saluna in this next battle is probably going to wipe you out, so good luck. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. If you'd like to have Mason back in another video, please let us know down in the comments. If you learned something or just enjoyed this video, please give a like. And most importantly, if you want more gaming content on YouTube, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Happy gaming, my friends.